All righty. Um, so welcome to TNG Online Connect. So uh, those of you who have been before, uh, welcome. And to newcomers, um, hope you enjoy and get good value out of the session. So a uh, quick recap on what it's about. So obviously the TNG Online Connect is a resource to uh, help educate and bring speakers across the nation uh, to speak to certain topics and really just and put more into um, what you get from TNG. And obviously the other side is allow TNG members from all across the country to join in on an online forum and network with people they would normally get to network with. So this, uh, so thanks Melanie and Mark. Um, and uh, this session, so we've got Jennifer Dahl from uh, um, Auckland Unlimited as a, uh, an, they're a business growth advisor uh, for regional business partners networks. So some of you might be familiar with um, what RGB, um, RG, yeah, regional business partner network, what they um, were doing over COVID um, with the grants and helping businesses um, get back on their feet. And um, Jennifer herself is um, XBNZ, uh, Westpac uh, business manager and has a, um, a history in private banking. Um, she's also a financial advisor um, and she's also a business owner personally, so uh, she understands business, that's for sure, and uh, she's um, got a wealth of knowledge to share. So um, you, you're speaking from Ariwa today, Jennifer? Yes, I am. I'm just hoping that the, um, I'm, I've just sent a text that my countdown shopping's due to arrive, which <laughs> might right. set the dog off, so I um, apologise in advance <laughs> for yeah. all that. There's a um, few names that I recognise here, actually, from, um, there's at least, who of you I think that have engaged with the regional business partner program before? Um, yeah, I can. Um, so, yeah, so uh, do you want me to crack on with that, Dan? Or have you got a process of things that you? Oh, uh, that, that's absolutely fine. So, uh, I just request that um, everyone on the Zoom, if you can just uh, mute yourself or keep it quiet while uh, Jennifer is chatting away, and then afterwards we'll have a question. An answer session. So uh, cool. raise your hand or communicate that way. But otherwise, Jennifer, take it away, please. All righty. Well, I'll attempt to share the screen with you. Um, here we go. Is that all coming through for everybody? Yep, I can see that. Yep. Fine. Okay, cool. All right. So just talking today to you about um, Regional Business Partner Network. It is nationwide. Um, so it's actually a collaboration between Callaghan Innovation and New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, and it's all over New Zealand, but Auckland Unlimited has the contract in Auckland, obviously. So um, up north, it's Northland Inc. that look after it, and Tauranga, it's the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's in Wellington, it's, it's whatever Wellington are calling themselves these days. I think they, they might still be Grow Wellington. And... Basically, um, what essentially what the program is designed to do is to connect businesses with support and some funding to access that support. So um, Dan mentioned earlier about um, the COVID-19 fund, and that was something that the government um, started, obviously, you know, sort of March, end of March last year, um, and gave us a swath of money and said, go for it. And we had a, a time frame. So some of you may have been, um, may have engaged with that fund, but that's that's now finished. Um, the fund that we've always worked on really is, is the, um, the management capability fund, which they talk about here. So that's ongoing. Um, I've been doing this role now coming up eight years and I've been working um, with that fund for eight years and then it talks about the tourism transition fund as well so that kicked in um, pretty much at the tail end of the COVID fund and that's for businesses who have been impacted by closed borders essentially so um, so it talks here about again about the New Zealand trade enterprise and the Callaghan innovation so Callaghan innovate so there's two kind of prongs to the regional business partner program um, the prong that I deal with is the New Zealand Trade Enterprise funding. So that's that, that COVID funding and then and the management development funding and the tourism transition funding. The Callaghan Innovation Funding is more for businesses that are doing science-based R&D. So I'm not sure whether any of you are engaged in that, but, um, 
but it's yeah businesses that are looking to do clinical trials on things or they need help with product development um it's not not you know trying to develop a different flavor of ice cream it's not that sort of r d it's more things innovation things that haven't existed before that and it could be in the um, bioactives or food and, and beverage or um, healthcare or tech stuff that goes way over my head that I don't really understand. So that's the um, the Callahan side of things. Um, but essentially, the the program is all predicated on the basis that um, we're connecting businesses with with training and um, and coaching and support um, and offering some funding for them to to engage with those things. Um, so often businesses will register thinking that they hear funding, funding, and they register thinking that it's going to be, you know, we're going to be tipping some money into their operational um, expenditure, but unfortunately it, it doesn't work that way. Um, it's more businesses that have identified that they have gaps in their management capability. Um, so for example, you know, you might be in an amazing um, creator of some technology, but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you know the best way to take it to market or you know maybe you have been in business for for 10 years selling making and selling widgets around the country but um, you've identified that you now want to take that offshore so uh, but you need help to you know get to the point where you can export um, or maybe it's understanding your numbers or um, or going digital or managing staff that you, you need help with so um, typically a, a business will engage with us they're looking for some help in, in those areas um, in various other areas that I'll, I'll cover off and the idea is that um, if they haven't already got someone that they're wanting to work with that's approved on the program then we can make some recommendations for them um, and then as I say give them some, some funding to help them with that so the various areas that we do cover off are business planning and, and strategy um, so that's that's probably the the first and, and most criti critical thing, I guess. I'm interested to know what you, as business owners yourselves, would um, would make of that. But I guess without a plan, um, you know, without a goal, an end goal, and a, and a plan, it's pretty difficult to get there often. Um, so that's usually the first place that most businesses would start when they engage with a, a business coach, I guess. Um, and then business sustainability, that's sort of a key thing that um, a, a, you know, a critical area at the moment is as well. So that's both, I guess, sustainability of the business, but also the circular economy and, and that kind of thing as well. Um, and quite apart from the regional business partner program, that's one of the things that Auckland Unlimited um, really supports as, as well as um, you know, the, the role of Auckland Unlimited as, as the Economic Development Agency for Auckland is all about uh, warming up the, the Auckland's economic microclimate for, for businesses, but it also supports various things like um, workforce and, you know, uh, helping, supporting work, uh, skills, you know, relevant skills for the workplace and um, and encouraging businesses to be green, I guess, and, um, and that sort of thing. Um, so business systems is another area often that a growing business will have, have trouble with. They, um, you know, they need to be using as much as possible um, digital systems. Um, and they're, yeah, they're things that they may need help with. They may have identified that they've outgrown what they're using and so on and so forth. So those are things that, um, that we could perhaps you know, connect them with someone that can help them work through the, the minefield of, of upgrading systems and that kind of thing. Capital raising um, for a growing business, that's top of mind often. Um, and again, path of export I mentioned before. Finance side of things, that's generally businesses needing to understand the numbers, which is pretty critical as well. Understanding how to put a cash flow together and all the different components of that and uh, whether they're profitable, whether they can be or, or what they might, might need to do. Um, governance side of things, so particularly, you know, the role of um, director in business and, and um, you know, various responsibilities that go with that. Um, lean manufacturing and business operations. So again, um, we can connect businesses with practitioners of lean and, and help fund that intro.
to running their businesses um, in, a, in a lean fashion and um, also agile and that kind of thing. Um, managing resources, I guess the um, managing of staff, leadership, those are the sorts of things that we can offer some support for businesses to connect with under that. And then marketing, which is uh, top of mind for most businesses. I'd say that over the last eight years, um, probably 90% of businesses come in, perhaps a bit less than that since COVID. A lot of businesses are very mindful of their numbers, but um, they're wanting help with that. But certainly most business, businesses, it was pretty common in the past that they would come in wanting help with marketing. Um, that was the common theme, but not always the, the golden nugget. You know, a lot of businesses had to start at the start, which was that business planning piece before they, they really could look at the marketing aspect. Um, so probably can't read that. It's pretty, pretty tiny, but I've kind of talked my way through it anyway on that previous slide around what sort of fits under those various areas of business planning and sustainability and export and those sorts of things. The eligibility criteria. So um, it's pretty much any business in New Zealand. They have to have undergone an assessment with, um, it's got, it says AT there, sorry, that's old, old branding. We're, we're now Auckland Unlimited as of late last year. Um, so they have to have sat down with, with myself or one of my colleagues and, and had a chat. These days, a lot of that, we do it on Zoom. And um, unfortunately, we've had about, fortunately or unfortunately, we've had about 10 times the um, uh, number of businesses register for help on the program since COVID than we'd had the year previously. So this last year, um, that in-depth discovery session that we used to do has been you know, very much truncated and um, just to, to really get through the number of businesses that are looking for support. And most businesses, probably a hefty, a, a large proportion of them now are coming in with a recommendation of an advisor they're already working with that's already on the program. So um, that's short circuited a lot of it as well. So a year ago, the way we dealt with businesses was, um, you know, I, I felt as if I had more of a, oh, my dog's just joined me, but, oh, wait, Floyd. Um, it found as if we had a, a the luxury of having a lot more um, in-depth discussion and, and really understand people's business and we were able to go and visit their businesses and that kind of thing but I haven't really been able to do that for the last year just really but more of a, a production line unfortunately but um, yeah so essentially any business they have to undergo that that assessment with us they have to have fewer than 50 employees um, most businesses in New Zealand have fewer than 50 employees, let's face it, unless they're a, a corporate. So um, that's not too hard to, to meet that criteria. They have to be either GST registered or have a New Zealand business number um, and operating in a commercial environment. That is a tricky one for a lot of businesses because um, it does tend to mean that startups if they're really early stage pre-revenue startups, they can't access the funding for building their management capability, which is a bit sad. Um, it just it, there's a little bit of little bit of wiggle room there. If they're if they're a startup that has a really clever team, um, they're well resourced. They're, they're you know they might not have made any money yet, but they're just about ready to go, and they've already done a capital raise or something like that. Then um, you know we can obviously help those businesses because. Um, that's a bit different from a startup business. That's you know the idea is still a twinkle in their eye, um, and then down here it talks about they have to be privately owned. So that pretty much excludes um, trusts and you know not for profits and that sort of thing. So they're either privately owned or a um, a Maori business. Um, the tourism transition funds. I'm, I'm not sure whether anybody here has accessed that. Um, that will be at an end soon as well. That was introduced as a result of COVID. And there's a bit more, other than the advice piece um, and training, there's been a lot more support available under that. So um, in particular, things like, you know, hibernating tourist, tourism businesses until such time as the borders open again um, and helping them deal with some legal issues and that kind of thing. You know, obviously lots of businesses with um, unable to pay their landlords, that sort of stuff. So. I'm not sure whether there's 
any businesses here that have been affected by the closed borders that might perhaps um, come in under that. We've got limited time to make use of it, but um, please get in touch if there's anybody who feels that um, that they may have been, you know, quite largely substantially affected by the closed borders. Um, yeah, so again, that's just, that's the sort of thing that was, I'm not sure whether you guys can read that, but this is the sort of advice that was available under that, um, that was fundable under the tourism fund. So again, it was the legal stuff. It was the assisting with um, understanding of cash flow and trying to manage that. Um, digital enablement, health and wellness, because obviously there's a lot of businesses, um, you know, whose mental health was very severely affected as a result of COVID-19. Um, marketing, business continuity planning, and that hibernating of the business that I've talked about before. So again, that the only difference in the eligibility criteria for those businesses is that it, it could be up to 100 employees there. Oh, and it did actually, it talks about the various um, businesses that might have been affected. That um, So again, I'm not sure whether anybody's in accommodation um, within this group, food and beverage, transport, um, anybody in space transport? Arts, recreation, retail, um, education and training, obviously those sorts of things. Okay, so what do you need to do if you want to make use of this program? Um, if you've been on it before, then you either just contact myself or whoever you've dealt with before, um, or you can come in at uh, business.auckland. Um, actually, I'll have to come back to you with that email address because I'm having a moment. I think it's uh, yeah, business.aucklandnz.com. That address there is old branding, so please ignore that one. It's yeah, definitely, definitely business.aucklandnz.com. Um, and then we get you to answer it. We, we send out a link to a short online questionnaire. And then once we've got that back, we've got a bit of information about um, what your business is all about and what, how we could possibly help. Then we um, have a, usually a Zoom call these days. Um, and we make recommendations of, we call them service providers, but they're business trainers or coaches um, that you, you know, that would perhaps suit you and help meet your needs, or if you've been sent in by somebody who's already approved on the program that you're working with, um, then we'll just get you to get a proposal from them and, um, and then we can set up the funding from there. Um, if you're new to the RPB, new to this program and haven't um, dealt with anybody before, then um, first step is to actually go to the Regional Business Partner website and follow your nose through there and register and then we start the, the same sort of process from there. Okay, so there's just a few things, a few businesses that have engaged with the program um, and giving us a bit of a um, report card there. And that's it. So certainly not half an hour of your time that I'm taking up, but has, has anyone got any questions? Um, thank you so much. Who have we got there? Shall I hide that now? Um, yeah, if you want to, um, yep, you can stop sharing your screen now and then we can see the rest of the group. Perfect. All right. Uh, well, well, probably a, a first step would obviously be you've got your people seeking services and your people providing services. So in as, uh, like with the business owners here in the room, what would you recommend would be the first step towards setting up uh, a service? in terms of um, yeah. um, for a business owner so um, I guess the, predominantly the, the service providers on the program are you know the business coaches and trainers are already or their um, or their accountants um, or their we've got a number of um, you know website developers and and SEO specialists and that kind of thing on there so um, the first step of the program again is to go to that regional business partner um, .nz and the, basically the, it, you know the, it gives you two sort of paths that you can go down and one of them is that you're applying for business support and the other one is that um, you're working with businesses doing training and capability building and you want to register as a provider so that's the first step 
Um, so last year, while we were, you know, frantically trying to get the COVID fund out the door um, and dealing with businesses that were melting down all over the show, the regional business partner we just network decided it would be a great idea to upgrade the um, platform and migrate everything to a new platform. So you know, the timing of that was just really cool. But um, so they did that late last year. That then means that um, all the service providers that had had their programs um, approved and, and featured on the old platform then had to reload them all and have them all re-approved on the new platform and they're still working their way through that one. So there are still a huge queue of programs waiting to be approved. So how are we dealing with that at the moment at Auckland Unlimited is that when a business comes to us and says, right, I wanna work with ABC Consultancy Limited and I look up ABC Consultancy Limited and I can see that their program is sitting in the pending queue, um, then we go direct to the regional business partners and say, hey, can you fast track this and, and get it approved? Because we've got a business that wants to, to get on there. So, um, yeah, we're sort of having to deal with it that way until such time as it um, is all sorted. So it's a, I don't know how long it's going to take. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. But, um, yeah, so that's the first step is to get approved as a, as a provider. And then you've got to load your programs up and they each have to be approved as well. So if you've got somebody that's wanting to, um, to use the program, then as I say, we, we try and fast track that, fast track that through. Right. right. Uh, uh, I know Claire had a question as well. It's... Yeah, no, you actually asked my question, so that's all good. Thank you. Mark? Jennifer, so just... I've, I've accessed you guys um, for TNG, actually, which was absolutely superb for some coaching through COVID um, and Excellent. through another business. And you've helped a lot of my franchisees in that other business. And it's been absolutely invaluable to be able to have that support from, from um, not only the government, I guess, but what you guys do. Awesome. And I know it was stressful because everybody was desperately trying to get help with their businesses. But just, just so that I'm clear, we've always accessed it for, I guess, business coaching and mentoring. So can you just tell me about, you know, what you can actually get in regards to, can you get marketing? Can you get SEO? Can you, where, do, do you we can. just go on um, You can, but it's on the basis that um, your business is learning about the marketing. So usually it starts with the digital strategy, you know, depending on how far along the, the track with it a, a business might be. So um, if a business doesn't already have a marketing and a digital strategy, that would be the first piece. I guess I, I saw here we've got Patrick from the Webco. You're a, are you a website developer? Would that be true that you'd, if a business comes into you wanting <laughs> you know, yeah. a, a, a website, they've got to have some strategy around it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're a... a, a registered provider and we've uh, done many many, uh, many uh, <coughs> uh, vouchers for for customers around around strategy um, sure. uh, yeah. both for both for yeah. tourism related and non-tourism related okay. So. okay so it's this funding doesn't pay for the doing of the doing so no. it won't pay Patrick to um, build that website for you but mm. it would perhaps help pay some of Patrick's costs of nutting out with a business owner what their digital strategy should be. And then um, I don't know whether Patrick would do this or whether it would be somebody else, but um, once you know the website is sort of up and running and that kind of thing, it's okay, but how do we then drive traffic to it? So um, that might be a mixture of SEO or um, using social media or, or whatever. And, um, and the business owner might not be very au fait with all the mechanics of that. So could potentially do some training to get there. To, to build up their capability in that area. Yeah. So I'm assuming that small businesses in New Zealand, that's that's a that's a, a big ask and a big market alongside of obviously the mentoring and stuff as well, because that's probably where we see with the networking group people struggle the most. Yeah. They're lot yeah. they're lost, to be honest with you. Yep. Yep. It absolutely is. And it's as I mentioned before that that's probably the um the most compelling reason that businesses come seeking help is they're like you know I don't have enough customers I need to grow my business 
and I need to have, you know, I need marketing to do that. Often they need to start further back in the process because if things suddenly went Ooh, and they had, you know, 40,000 customers come in the door, what would they do then? Have they got scalability or, you know, they, they need to address a whole lot of things before that. But um, it, it is a, and it is a hard ask in that most small businesses, you know, particularly, I mean, the, if they're a, a tradesman, you know, they might be quoting and supervising their their tradies and, and um, you know, sending out the bills and hiring somebody new and doing the employment contract and sweeping the floor and washing them in. And, you know, it's it's pretty difficult to then say, right, now you've also got to morph into a digital specialist and, and understand how all that works and do that as well. So, you know, there's probably an argument for maybe understanding it enough to know what you need and then, you know, getting some contracting some of it out. I, I just don't believe you can be an expert at everything. But, um, you know, perhaps, perhaps a, um, learning enough about these certain topics to, to fake it till you make it and, you know, is, is, is probably the best that you can do as a small business person in a lot of ways. Yeah, so my next question, sorry, I'm hogging the question thing. Not but at all. You guys obviously had a load of funding for COVID and then had a bit more. And and I know that you have a financial year and then you get more allocations and things like that. So where are you at? And I know you can only speak for Auckland, but the rest of the country won't be too dissimilar, I'm guessing. Where um, are you at? Well, no, actually, we've stuff? been, um, I don't know about the rest of the, the, the country, but... Um, it's generally they've got money left over and we're um you know we've got not not enough it seems to be how it, how it kind of works but this year um we've had to introduce austerity measures and pretty much say to businesses that look if um we're going to prioritize businesses that are employing staff we feel like they need we've got limited funds and we're not getting any more and uh, we need to eke it out as much as possible and um and help as many businesses as possible. So if you're a business that employs five full-time equivalents, then we're going to give you the full whack of five grand that you can have. This is on a 50-50 basis. So in order for somebody to get the five grand, they've got, they've got to be spending five as well. So it would um, it means that the, the training proposal that they've got is at least 10 grand. Um, and then we sort of, from there, we sort of said, okay, well, if you've got three or more staff, we might give you, you know, two grand or three grand. Um, if you've got less than than three staff, you're only getting a thousand. So that's been a bit sad, unfortunately. And um, businesses have been, a, you know, a bit annoyed by that because they've historically understood that they could have up to five grand. But do you know um, what? We don't get that from anywhere else. We only get that support and that package from you guys. True, nobody else but, gives us nobody else gives us that as yeah this that's right there is nothing yeah there's nothing from the government really um in terms of business support except what is available for the regional business partner program and um it is different throughout country which does make it a, a little bit more complex so because other other regions don't have the same amount of businesses and people and and challenges that businesses in auckland have so, um, you know, often they're quite happily, you know, giving every business that comes to see them and in the manner or two, they're happy to give them their five grand because they've got plenty of cash because we're having, you know, having to be pretty brutal about it. So You've got the largest amount of small businesses by... Correct. Yeah, by country mile. Um, and the other, the other key thing is that, so I, talk, I touched on how it can be a bit tricky with startups and um, I touched on... Um, you know, the, the number of employees, that's impacting it at, at the moment. The other thing is that we can't sort of refund somebody, a business to do what they might have done before. So, you know, we're hoping that if you started by getting some, you know, doing some training and capability building around strategy and that kind of thing, um, you then, I'm going to shut that door, sorry, because it's my husband, like he's on, obviously on a call as well. <laughs> Got to love Zoom. He's a, a bit distracting. Um, and sorry, so we was a we was again. So uh, yeah, so the, the hope is that you would retain those skills and that capability in your business, um, and you could 
you know, then use those principles for it forever after. Yeah. Um, but that next time, you know, maybe you'd say, all right, well, we've got the strategy person, we know how to do that, but you know, we need some um, our our boss, our managing director, or whoever, or you know, our senior exec team, or whatever. They actually need some help with building their capability and and governance or in leadership or or something like that. So you know, it's meant to be doing something else, ideally. Perfect. So uh, as uh, as majority, uh, you know, business owners, that sort of thing. So obviously when um, creating services, there's quite a specific way that you need to be writing uh, about the services, explaining the services. So um, I know uh, from personal experience when submitting services to, to, what, uh, to regional business partners network, there's, there's quite a lot of back and forth and quite a lot of editing involved yeah, to kind of get yeah. it right. Yeah. So do you have any tips for businesses wanting to submit? Um, to I'm not so sure about that side of things because it's all approved by the regional business partner, but I guess just bearing in mind that it must be around training and capability building. So um, excluding anything that um, isn't related to that, that is that is the doing bit or the consultancy bit, making sure that that doesn't feature in there um, and making it pretty clear because there's also these you know the, the various aspects that you can um, register under so you know the business um, strategy and the the finance and the government governance and and that kind of thing just like just making sure that if the program that you're offering is um is about leadership making sure that's in the right place you know making sure it's in the, the managing resources thing and not under the marketing bit or or whatever. The other critical bit from um, our perspective is when we're approving funding for businesses, it's, it's, we get these proposals that, I, I mean, I guess I can understand that as a, um, as business owners, you're wanting to use your proposals as marketing tools to, you know, for your clients, but when the client then submits that to us, it seems like there's a lot of waffle to wade through about how wonderful you are <laughs> you know, ever before we can get to the numbers bit and to try and, and it's it's not clear and then and that's more likely that you know we'll push back and say oh no we're not going to fund that or we're not going to fund that business to do that or what because we don't understand um exactly what it is so it's just so we have actually got a template that um like a template service provider proposal that we encourage all the service providers to to use which cuts through all that and we'll match with what you've had approved on the system. But I, yeah, so to answer your earlier question, I could only really suggest that, um, that yeah, you just be clear about what you're doing, that you, um, that it is capability and not consultancy, because if it, if the RPB, you know, see that there is consultancy and doing of the, the doing in there, then it's just bang gone. Um, but they're generally pretty good. They do come back with edits. Give you, you know, give you the opportunity to, to edit it um, rather than really just fucking it out. That's really helpful. Yeah, it's um, de definitely focusing on that uh, the education and the upskilling of the business owner to yeah. empower them to do it themselves. Um, that's definitely the angle to, to be pushing for and uh, keeping those uh, proposals simple, um, I guess, uh, straight to the point. Um, yeah, and if there's some way to, if, if you're able to um, break the proposals into components, so, so, uh, well, so break the programs into components, so you might work with, so, so like somebody is, who's coaching a, a client for, through their business strategy, um, which might start with, you know, it might be a one-day workshop or something, and then there's monthly meetings, and in some ways, depending on what's involved, they might be better to actually you know, make that one program and that one program that, and then a customer signs up for three programs or whatever, um, because certain businesses won't get all the funding. So that might be um, a way to, it might make it easy, easier to work with businesses then that's, you know, because some businesses are only going to get a thousand and some will get 2000 and some will get 5000. I think that our, our financial year end is actually uh, end of this month. And then going into one July, I suspect that we'll have the same sort of um, austerity measures again, just until we can get a sense for how many businesses are out there wanting 
Let me help. Has, um, does anyone else have any questions that they'd like to ask Jennifer? I'll just make a comment so that people can kind of, oh, sorry, go Nigel, I'll go after you. Turn your volume and on. Just muted, Nigel. I'll mute it, yeah. yeah. So with two screens. Um, <clears throat> crystal ball gazing, do you see any changes coming for support for the tourism side? Because that is an ongoing problem going to be for probably another year or more before we realistically have a proper inbound tourism sector. Yeah, um, I haven't heard anything, to, to be honest. The Tourism Transition Fund um, is actually coming to an end in the next little while. Um, and so we've taken on extra people to try and work through that and get that out the door. But what happens after that, I don't know doesn't seem to be, um, the governments haven't, haven't come forward to, to say, okay, well, this is ongoing, what are we, what are we going to do? I guess they're, they're saying, okay, the businesses, tourism businesses have had a year of, of some support by this stage, they either, yeah, I, I don't know, all I would suggest is there's a whole raft of things really, isn't there, around vaccines and all sorts of that, we probably can't go there today, but um, I haven't got any good news to give you. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what it is. Jennifer, I'll just tell you what we've what we've done based on the support that you guys have provided to my um, renovations and maintenance company. So we've used you, different owners, not just in Auckland, but right across Wellington and Tauranga um, in the last sort of 12 months and before that. What we've been able to do by using the same uh, business coach and the same platform is, is update our processes, update all of our induction program, update all of our systems as well. And that's because we've been funded by you guys and we're each owner working with that same person funded by you, we've been able to improve all of that. And so awesome. we've, we've had a massive boost in, in productivity and the way that we go about our business based on the funding that you guys, and, and obviously the owners provide as well, but you know, that's that's huge and I think that it's really undervalued and I understand a lot of people here are providers or want to be providers but when you sit on the other side of the fence and you know you're getting help because there is nothing else that comes and, and it's not just this government but small business didn't get anything out of the budget at all no no, 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 no not, I get me not, started not a sniff, you know and 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 that's fine we, you know we're Kiwis and we're resilient and, and we'll do it tough anyway um, but, you know, we've been able to grow our business and all our owners and everything. And that's a, a, a huge amount of that is through the, obviously, the provider that we've used through you guys, but your ongoing support. So I Excellent. think if people, if people don't know who you are, then, you know, they need to wake up. That's great news. Hey, thank you for that, Mark. Really appreciate it. Um, there was just something else I was going to say. You know. It's related to, to that. I mean, um, the whole franchising piece is actually, you know, getting some advice around um, franchising your, your businesses and that sort of thing, that's, that's kind of covered off in there as well. Um, business, for you guys, though, if you're wanting to become providers, um, a lot of providers come along and they join the program. And then the next time I see them, because we have these um, service provider catch up, get together, networky type things, sort of two or three times a, a year. And um, they'll come along to that and say, I haven't had a single referral out of you guys. Right. Um, and that's true for, for most of them because um, COVID meant that a whole lot more providers came on. And <coughs> we just don't know who they are any, anymore. Um, we don't have the same working relationship that we, there used to be something like, you know, a thousand on the program. I think there's something like, I don't know, probably 3,000 or, or something ridiculous um, on there now, like the whole of New Zealand. Um, so, you know, I am saying to, to I hate the word providers, but that's, that's what we call them. But, you know, I'm saying to them, hey, look, your best use of the program really is um, to send your client along to us with, it, with your proposal. and um, you know, and then we can give them some funding to work with you. So that might help you um, clinch the deal with that client, you know, get them to stick their toe in the water and understand um, that, 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 you know, the value of engaging a, 
professional to help build their capability in, in management. Um, but in terms of joining the program, thinking that you're going to get heaps of leads and referrals out of it, unlikely. Unless you're really, really niche, you know, specifically do, I don't know, business coaching with what, whatever, I don't know, some particular niche industry. And then when that, when those niche business, and we know about it, and then when those niche businesses, you know, come in looking for um, help, you know, you'd, you'd be top of mind. But um, garden variety, you know, business strategy coaches, marketing coaches, accountants, it's pretty difficult to give referrals to, to all of those. You know, it just, yeah, just doesn't really happen. But Surely it's our job to go chase our own business and, and exactly. find new clients for ourselves. It's, it's not your job to go spoon feed us. So I get two business coaches come to me. One says I can get you 50% funding and one doesn't say anything. True. Yeah. Depends on the caliber of the coach, Mark. Agreed. But you should do your due diligence anyway, yeah. because yeah. as Jennifer says, there's an awful lot of them. There's 3,000 providers now. Yeah. But, you know, it's about using it as part of, 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 of what you're selling as a provider. Absolutely. That's quite correct. Cool. All right. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Jennifer. Um, you're very welcome. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, have a nice long weekend, guys. Yeah. Nice hey. to see you again. It's nice definitely... to see you. See ya. Um, Bye. Uh... All righty. Um, so, uh, Jennifer's, um, yeah, obviously uh, provided an awesome um, resource, a um, lot of learning today. So if you do want to recap, uh, go over the video, then th this is obviously recorded. Uh, so we'll send the recordings through to, uh, to Melanie. And then obviously, if there is anyone in your own TNG group that uh, is curious about it, then definitely um, send them the link to the, the video or um, obviously put them in touch with Jennifer. Uh, so what we'll do before we wrap up is we'll just do a quick uh, wrap around the room, just introduce yourself, introduce your business, um, and maybe mention if you've uh, been involved in Regional Business Partners Network before, um, or use their services, um, and then we'll uh, tee up and uh, wrap up the meeting. So let's uh, start with you, Natalie. Oh, hey guys. Um, anyone that I don't know, my name is Natalie. I'm a relationship manager for Junk to Go Rubbish Removal Services. So my day consists of talking a massive amount of rubbish. So we operate Auckland wide seven days a week. We will come to your premises and your premises, your office, renovation sites or rental properties and provide you with a free non, no obligation quote. If you're happy, we remove it right there and then and we even provide a cleanup service. We don't only just take, but we give back as well. So we try our best to support our local charity organizations so if there's anyone that you know that needs help putting rubbish in its place, I'd love to connect and chat. Thank you, Natalie Jung to go. Perfect. Uh, Helen. And you're muted, Helen, sorry. Is that better? Perfect. Uh, Helen Mitchell, um, Kenneth 2021, I've just started in the process of starting a new business and I'm working with Nigel on that at the moment. And the accountant did suggest that I get in touch with Auckland Unlimited to see what was on offer there. So it's been interesting this morning to uh, have that session. Uh, the focus is really of the business is value, but not just necessarily the value that people try to give and businesses to their customers and such like. This is a value that is within the business and generally hidden and not made use of. And it's developing that area to change the perspective on the company and businesses in general. Perfect. Thanks, Helen. Gary. Hi, um, I'm Gary. I own a web design company and uh, for uh, we graphic designers for web and print. Um, it's been a really interesting meeting um, because uh, we actually, my wife and I are actually starting another business as well. Um, and that's gonna be in the gifting uh, business. And it's been in the planning for about a year now already. 
and uh, and we finally in the final throes of getting started. So um, some almost like someone to have a look at it and make sure we've got all our ducks in a row would be great. So maybe um, RBP could help with that. Um, but yeah, so um, web design, and I know you're a web designer as well, Dan, so, um, so we're competition with each other. But if you're Auckland-based, then yeah, come and see me. Thank you. <laughs> no problem there. Uh, Nigel. Hi, um, I, I know most of you, but for the couple I don't, Nigel, Phoenix Consultancy Services, and my focus is on back-end systems and processes. Um, all the areas where you've got extra profits is hiding in plain sight. Um, I give a particular focus upon your Google My Business listing, the, um, the effectiveness of your website, the calls to action within it, and also looking at your LinkedIn profile as well. Uh, if you get those three things right, then you're going to get organic SEO and you're going to save a heap on any advertising you might currently be spending on Google AdWords or Facebook ads. Because uh, if you've got the organic SEO, you don't need that stuff. Um, and so I can link it together, get the traffic through from your Google Analytics, your Google Search Console, bring that all into the GMB, and I can map what your audience is doing uh, and show you how effective your keywords are, uh, how effective your time to answer phone calls is, um, what your audience is doing across your website. And bring all that into a single digital footprint. Uh, so that's Nigel, Phoenix Consultancy. Perfect. Uh, Ken. Yeah, morning, everyone. Uh, Ken Jackson from the Mortgage Lab. And we often get engaged to help people, you know, establish their home loan. That seems to be the majority of our work, but a lot of people don't realize that we also, the ongoing management of your mortgages is quite a good thing to look at. The dreaded uh, break fees, everyone just seems to assume I won't break it because there's going to be break fees, but um, it's actually based on the wholesale rates and they've been climbing up. So effectively, for most um, mortgages, there's actually no very little break fees, if any at all. So you, what that means is we're seeing long-term rates are going up and therefore it's now a good time to look forward, further forward, break out of your existing arrangement and reset them to try and get maximum either with the, the incredibly lows that are at the moment, just trying to extend those out as long as you can. Otherwise, the, uh, the rates are going to be uh, increasing. That's, that trend seems to be established. So, yeah, Ken Jackson, the mortgage lab. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Yolanda? Hi, um, I'm Yolanda from Chirolite, holistic chiropractor. I have discovered a way to integrate trauma that's held in the body um, so that you no longer have ongoing injuries or ongoing pain. Um, and although that sounds like a wonderful idea where you don't consistently injure the lower back or arm or foot or whatever, what you actually get is a huge benefit in um, energy in the brain and you get more space in the brain to function and work into your genius. So yeah, that's what I do. I'm Yolanda from Cairo Light, um, down in Parihiri Pepikur. Perfect. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, Baptiste? Good morning, B and I. How are you guys? All good? P and G. P and G. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, B and I again, sorry. P and G. I was at the B and I meeting and I, I came from there and uh, I got caught up in the traffic. Sorry, guys, I was late. And therefore, that is ringing in my head. Uh, it's like traffic getting worse and worse in Auckland. The ta tax factor also gets worse and worse. So don't worry about it. Baptist is here to solve all your tax problems. And uh, I always tell my clients, you have to pay Caesar what is due to Caesar, and but don't leave a tip. So what, what we do is we plan your taxes and then then uh, see that you pay the minimum amount of tax and the tax is plowed back into the business so that you prosper and grow. So another tagline is we help businesses to prosper and grow. So if you have any tax problems, your issue or any, you're worried about tax, don't leave your worries to me and I will take care of them. That is Baptist on Tax Advantage. Thanks, Baptist. Gas. Thanks, Dan. I love 
the networking group. What great value add this morning from Jennifer. And thank you, Dan, for getting it organized. People know me. I'm Garth Partridge, the National Groups Manager for the networking group. And um, what I really enjoy doing is helping people get even better results from their business networking. And I circulate around the group. So thanks for having me along. Awesome session. Thanks, Dan. No worries, Garth. Uh, Mark? I don't have much to say. Nice to see everyone. Nice to see people, you know, in on these meetings, Dan. And I just want to say thank you, like Garth did, for, you know, providing the platform and making sure it all happens for everyone every second Friday. And everybody have a really nice long weekend. Yes, it's going to be, um, it's going to be good. Um, Melanie, I'll let you close, but uh, hi, I'm Dan. Uh, so I run Ingot Digital Design. So where we, the space that we sit in best is that custom website space. So uh, when a business is starting out, you know, you don't need everything. You don't need everything with bells and whistles. You just need something that works and communicates what you do. Um, where we love to work is with businesses as they grow, as they add team members, as they add, um, you know, systems and, and processes, we can then, um, make make sure that their website space mimics that and grows at the same rate. So uh, we lo we love to work in the space of you know adding in user portals for, for businesses sites or um, customize you know large scale e commerce um, membership portals or um, learning centers forums um, you know custom APIs you know bringing in data from all sorts of the web and integrating it into your website to automate processes. So that's really the space that we love to work in. And we do work with uh, other web development companies as well, um, helping kind of add that little functionality on top of what they're doing. And um, yeah, that's the space we love to work in. Um, so again, obviously, thank you everyone for joining in on the session. Melanie, um, have we got a speaker lined up for Fortnite? Or is it? No, I don't. No. We, we have um, a, a long list of, uh, of the people we want to find. Um, but uh, yeah, M Melanie, um, there's, there's going to be, uh, or we've had some epic speakers in the past. So Melanie, did you want to touch on anything there? Or go ahead. I just want to share something that I think follows really nicely from Garth's session last fortnight, if I may. And it was an article I was reading on the Octopus Tribe during the week. And the headline was basically five tips to brand yourself before someone else does. And I thought after Garth's what's your story and finding those critical non-essentials for your business was also really important to look at branding yourself. And the tips that they recommended were, think of your personal profiles on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram as your personal brand. The nuances of your bio, your visual content will shape the type of person that people perceive you to be. So think carefully about the message that you put out there. The second one is share your opinions online. Are you positioning yourself where you want to be? Share your opinions by writing blogs, commenting on other posts and sharing your insights to start getting seen. Next one leads nicely from that and it starts speaking. Naturally, you can join a networking group to do that. You can obviously speak online. You can go to Toastmasters. There's all sorts of places where you can learn to speak and to <laughs> develop your brand. The uh, next one is Mind Your Company. Where are you spending your time? It's important for it to be relevant and that you're inspired so that you get the, con the content that you're consuming is what you're putting back out there. So to finish, it says uh, you, you need to determine what you stand for, how you want people to perceive you and what tone of conversation you want to have. Every time you send an email, it's branding. Your voicemail message, also branding. You can't escape it, so embrace it. So if you want to read that article, I will, um, I've, I've got it obviously, I can send you the link. It's on the Octopus Tribe on Facebook. Um, and then just to finish, I just wanted to say that these recordings are on our YouTube channel. Again, if you haven't seen our YouTube channel, 
we put 60 second sessions there, we put 10 minutes, we put um, these recordings. So again, contact me, I'll send you the link to the networking group YouTube channel. Um, and then finally, if you are enjoying your networking at the networking group, we would really appreciate if you could give us a positive Google review. And in return, that we will do the same for you, that we want to support and help all of our members to grow. We're here to help you. So please, let's, let's review each other on Google and help each other. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thanks everyone. Um, obviously, long weekend ahead, so uh, get some rest. Um, enjoy, enjoy your long weekend. Hopefully, it's wonderful weather all around the country. And we'll be back in a fortnight at 10 o'clock, uh, Friday fortnight, um, for another awesome session. So thanks, everyone. And thanks, bye for now. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.